Do you take your blood pressure medications? When do you take your blood pressure medications? Do you take your blood pressure yourself at home or do you just take it in the doctor's office? When the doctor and the nurse take your blood pressure at the office, do they take it once? Do they take it twice? Do they take it in one or two arms? Wow. All we're trying to do is measure blood pressure. As you pointed out so rightly, Vicki, there's many different ways to take a blood pressure. And the value that you get depends on when you take it and how you go about doing it. So is it better to go to the doctor and have the doctor do it? We used to think that, and we've done that regularly, and doctors today still do that. And so if but it's blood, not right. Yeah, so if your blood pressure's up when you go to the doctor's office, which happens frequently because we call it white coat hypertension because the doctor has on a white coat and it makes you nervous or maybe you're running a little late or you ran up the stairs to get there or sure. you're just a little stressed and your blood pressure's up and so then the doctor ends up prescribing a, a blood medication. pressure medication yeah well you need to take your blood pressures on a regular basis if you think your blood pressure is high the best way to do it is at home when you're relaxed so you can see what the variations are what I ask my patients to do is take their blood pressure twice a day. Take it at morning and take it at night. So we can see what the variations are in it and take it for about two weeks and then email it to me so I can see what those patterns are. You don't even have to come back to the office for me to find out whether or not you have high blood pressure. Then if indeed it's high, we'll invite you back to the office and we'll do what we have to do to make sure your blood pressure comes down. So what do you think about this new study that talks about taking your blood pressure in both arms? This study was suggesting that if a person um, ha tends to have high blood pressure, and if you take their blood pressure in both arms simultaneously, mm -hmm. so I guess you'd have to have two cuffs, yes, one for would. each arm, uh -huh. and if there's a um, 10 to 15, uh, what do you call it, milligrams millimeters of, of millimeters, millimeters of mercury, mercury pressure difference. difference, then in the future you need to continue doing that, taking your blood pressure in both arms. Well, what this is about is if you have a variation in the two arms, it's more than 10 millimeters of mercury. That means that you're more prone to have complications of hypertension, like a heart attack or a stroke. An interesting observation. Do we know why? No, we don't know why, but it's called an outcome study. You find people who have this a lot, you track them, see how they do. They have more heart attacks and strokes. It's a sign that should warn you that that's a problem. But typically, doctors don't take blood pressure in both arms. They just take it in one. So if you ask your doctor to do this and to take it in both arms and there is a difference, it sounds like it would be worth it to buy two blood pressure cuffs yourself and take it yourself at home. We well, you actually don't have to do that. It sounds like a good idea because all you have to do is know that as a fact. Then your job is to keep the blood pressure down. And the question is, how do you do that the best? Now, doctors are saying, well, I need five or six or seven blood pressures at least so I can have an average. And what I say is that's inadequate, too, because blood pressure fluctuates a lot depending on your lifestyle. That's why it's good, I guess, to have one of those 24-hour blood pressure monitors. Uh, that can help monitors. a lot. So you take an ambulatory blood pressure monitor, and it'll track your blood pressure 80 times in a day, and it'll show you the pattern that you have. And there are different kinds of patterns that tell you different things. One of the patterns we see, and the first sign of significant hypertension, is that your blood pressure, which normally drops at night, maybe 10 or 15 millimeters of mercury, doesn't drop anymore. That's the first sign. Then it starts to go up. Ooh, that's and then not the, a good thing. No, and then all the rest of the blood pressures follow that. So maybe the first thing you would notice is a loss of what we call the sleeping blood pressure drop. So that's how we do ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. This sounds like it's also a good reason when people take their own blood pressures at home, not doing the blood pressure monitor after that's all behind them, and they're taking their own and then they go have a doctor visit that they need to bring the record with them so mm -hmm. that the doctor can see what their pattern is. Exactly. A lot of the time when I take a blood pressure in the office, which <laughs> I tend to do a lot less often, uh, I don't go by that blood pressure. I go by the blood pressures that the patient has taken at home because they're far more reliable and they tell you what's going on. So your blood pressure, the way you take it, uh, becomes a really important thing. Also, just recently there came out a study saying that it was important when you do have to take blood pressure medicine, rather than taking it in the morning, to take it at night. It's interesting, and the reason that, that they say that is because the number of complications uh, that people get are reduced if you take it at night because blood pressure oftentimes when it's not normal, when it's elevated, shows a dramatic rise at night rather than a drop. 
which is what we like to see when we measure blood pressure. So we need to take a lot of blood pressures. We need to monitor our own blood pressure on a regular basis. We need to titrate the dose of the medicine we take based on the blood pressures we get every day. So it's not like you can give the doctor two or three weeks of blood pressures and then they give you a medication and say, here, take this no matter what. What's because your blood pressure may drop at times to a level that's in the normal or low normal range. And when it gets that low, then you may have problems. If you take a blood pressure pill, it's going to drop it even more. I've seen people in who are athletes, for example, who when they're, uh, they're taking blood pressure pills for one reason or another because of their high blood pressure, and when they start exercising, they have a profound drop in blood pressure to as much as as low as 60 systolic, which That's is awfully right. they low. They could pass out. Well, they do. They pass out. And what you have to do, particularly if you're doing exercise on some days and not others, is gauge your medicine on a daily basis. Now, your doctor should be able to teach you how to titrate the dose so you know what to do. I do that with my patients and when I use medications. And we find that we get a much better response that way. So what do you consider a high blood pressure? I think 140 over 90 is where I would put the cutoff point. There's good data to show that that's a relatively safe place to be. And where you see the problems with heart attacks and strokes is over 140 systolic and over 90 diastolic. Is there a little bit less of a risk of a heart attack or a stroke if your blood pressure is, say, 120 or 110 over 70 or 80? The answer to that is yes, but is it worth taking a medication to achieve that? That answer is is arguable, my position, that it's not. Because there's many lifestyle measures that can help, like yes. you, you mentioned exercise, and of course diet and getting enough sleep and Those are getting the factors. stress out of your life. Exactly. I mean, if you don't get even the seven or eight hours of sleep that you need, your blood pressure is going to go up on a regular basis, and you can have what the doctor would call hypertension. And yet the real problem is what? Insomnia. You need to have enough sleep to be able to keep your blood pressure at a reasonable level. So did you want to talk about pulse pressure? That's a good point, Vicki. That's probably the most, it's a little more sophisticated than what we've been talking about, but it's the most predictive sign <clears throat> of blood pressure medicines that will tell you whether or not you're at risk for having a heart attack or stroke. And the pulse pressure is the difference between the top number and the bottom number. So if you have a problem with uh, high blood pressure and say it's 150 over 100, your, the difference between the two would be 50. If you had a normal blood pressure of 120 over 80, that number would be 40. So 40 obviously is better, is than, better 50. than 50. And you may have it 160 or 180 over 100, which is even worse. So the pulse pressure is the most important number that we measure. And of course, there are extremes, and you have to be using your common sense to decide whether or not that's what you want to do on a regular basis. Well, people used to say that the diastolic, the number on the bottom, was the most important. And right. then a few years ago, they changed it and said that it was the systolic pressure, exactly. that's the top number. And now you're saying that it's the, the difference, difference between, between the, the two. two. And yet you should pay attention to all of those. And I remember back when I was in Duke Medical School, they told me the bottom number was the most important. And it's interesting how by proclamation, we make ki certain kinds of decisions that are, they seem logical, but they're wrong. And we know that the systolic pressure is far more important than the bottom of the diastolic, but the pulse pressure is the big one. So as we look at this whole topic of blood pressure, the bottom line is, is if you have it, you want to take your blood pressure on a daily basis. You want to adjust your medication to that. You want to do lifestyle measures before you start using medications. And take They're, them at night. If you're going to take them, take them at night. There are very few people who have high blood pressure where it cannot be controlled by doing a lot of lifestyle measures and a lot of non-invasive therapies, for example, like working with the breath. So we should have a lot of confidence that we aren't necessarily going to be doomed to taking medication, and we should take responsibility for managing our blood pressure and for managing our drugs, too, under the supervision of our doctor.